What's up? I am Dustin Dean. And I'm Mama Dean. Mama Dean, that's got a good ring to it. I it like does. that. Um, we got our pipes moved. Mm -hmm. We're watering. Speaking of watering, we ain't got much time because if you look right here behind me, that is rain. It's getting windy. It's about to hit us. So we'll make this kind of a short vlog. And uh, what I want to talk about is how I feed my bees. And um, it's pretty simple. This is how I do it. Okay, so what we have here is just pure cane sugar. And we'll take that if I can get my lovely assistant to hold that. And I'll just, I'll just, uh, oh, 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 oh. You need to dump that in there. Okay. What is that? How many pounds is that? It's a four pound sugar. Four pound bag of sugar. There you got it? Got it. Okay, now this is, uh, I got this at IFA, they gave it to me for, for free for buying nukes, came mm -hmm. with one free of these with every nuke, Yep. and so they normally sell this at $11.99, and because, um, because I'm frugal, I'm, I, I gave half, and then I'll give half. So this is uh, liquid bee feed with mineral supplement. Um, so I'll just give, I'll just dump the rest of this in there. This smells like lemon to me. Smell that? That does smell like lemon. Should we put it in the baba? Want to put it in the baba? <laughs> no! No! Okay, we'll just dump all that in there. That's about a half a jug. It can't hurt. Um, sugar. We need, in order to get the sugar to melt, to break down, Mama Dean has heated up a hot pot of sugar. Water. Sugar! Water, hot pot of water. That's one gallon. We measured that out to be one gallon. You want to get out of the shot for us so we, they can see? Here, just stand right over here. That's, well, a little bit more. Alright, that's good. Let me stir that up. Okay, we got it all mixed up, and that's all there is to it. So, you guys know me, I have to taste everything. And so, oh dang, that's actually delicious. That is good. Really? That is, that's really good. Oh, 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 that actually is. That's good, isn't it? That actually is. That is beerific. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Uh, this hive, we, um, I probably should have filmed this today, but me and Shakara, we went ahead when it was nice today, and, um, oh, the reason why we didn't film it is because our batteries was dead on our camera, so we were like, ah, let's just check them anyway. Um, this hive, this is Shakara's hive, and she did all the work tearing into this hive today, and what did we see in there? We saw eggs. We saw eggs. Mm -hmm. There's no capped brood yet, but um, but we saw we saw eggs. Look at that. Yeah. Whoa! That's all right. The bees will come and clean that up. What about having a a double hole in here? is that they're all around there waiting for the sugar and I'll just put it over here on the other hole. 
that way they all travel over to that side so here comes that storm again it's getting hard to talk in the wind again so we'll just button these up and um and, and oh and we got to go pick up a a swarm box from a lady's yard who had a lot of bees in her yard and uh, was worried that um, and so we just for, we just put the box there see if there's any swarms we're gonna go check that out and uh, let's go do that okay so Thomas Akers asked us this question it says how hey guys how y'all doing hey I got a question is raising meat rabbits easy do they need a lot of attention or just a good pan Thomas, that is a very good question. Um, my humble personal opinion is that it is difficult as you want to make it. For us, it is extremely easy raising the rabbits. So easy that you have to remind yourself, the hard part is reminding yourself that you even have rabbits. Oh yeah, we have rabbits. Don't forget to feed and water them. Um, that's the hardest part about raising rabbits is remembering that they're still there. Uh, we have we have it set up to where about every other day uh, we feed and water them uh, every other day, and um, that's that's all the work we do. Just and that's not very much work. Just walk in there, fill up their water, give them a scoop of uh, of them rabbit pellets, make sure they got a flake of hay, and uh, just let them be rabbits. I would say one of the, if you're gonna do it the way that we do it, it's very important that they have a place for a dust bath. They're like chickens. Chickens get rid of mites the same way rabbits get rid of mites. They wall around and roll in the dust and it, it smothers out the mites. That's how they, they can take care of their own pest, their own pest control. So, um, very easy. We love the setup that we have and I think you'd enjoy it that way too. Um, but it can be difficult. Some people take and they put them in rafters and, and, and cages and, and and then, I mean, you can make it as difficult as you want. I think our way is very simple and um, we love it. Good question. I like that question. Guys, keep them questions coming. We love to answer them. We love to read them. And, uh, yep. Hey guys, we're just driving down the road here, and uh, I saw something black on these on this uh, rock right here. And we slowed down, and it's bees. And we just happened to have gotten our swarm trap from our um, from somebody's yard. So we're gonna try to save these, get them onto here, put them in the box, and take them home. See what they're doing is they're sticking their butts in the air and they're fanning, letting everybody know where to go, and they're all just walking right on in there. Ooh, I hear them. One of the things I always do, uh, you see, I'm not, I'm not even, I forgot my veil. I'll have to go get my veil because I don't want to get stung on the face. But I rarely get stung, and I believe it, the reason why is I give them plenty of smoke. I smoke uh, in their entrance, underneath. I crack this open, I smoke, and then I time it, and I'll wait 60 seconds or one minute, whichever comes first, I'll wait one of them, 60 seconds or a minute. And then I'll, and then I, I go into them, and um, it gives them time to calm down, it gives them time to, they, they, you know, also think their house is on fire, so they immediately take their honey up, and uh, they get full bellies and they can't sting very well. Uh, and so I, um, I believe that's why I don't get stung very often. I usually get stung maybe once a year. And I was w watching an episode with Michael Palm Palmer, 
he's a bee expert and he was saying that um, a, 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 a beekeeper and his family, even the children, she gets stung um, at least once a month. Otherwise, you'll get you'll become allergic to the bees just from the bee dust from opening these hives and uh, and and breathing in their um, the 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 bee fumes and the dust it gets you allergic to it. So you need to get stung once a month. Um, man, I I don't like I don't like needles even, let alone purposely getting stung once a month. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are on that one. Should I? Should I maybe in the next vlog purposely get stung? Let me know what you guys think about that. Okay guys, um, this is where the swarm we just caught today, we put it here on the end, and uh, I think um, we have another rainstorm over there that's coming our way. Um, so I think we'll call it good for the day. Tomorrow we'll put them in a hive like this one, and we'll start feeding them. So they can start drawing out comb and collecting honey and I like honey. It's good. Uh, it's been fun. You had fun, Shakara? You did. Good, she's behind the camera. <laughs> Alright guys, we love you and we'll see you in the next one. You showed me